viewers and welcome to new Zimbabwe.com's economic insights program which we hold regularly to try and unpack some complex issues transpiring within our economy. Today we are blessed to be hosting Mr. Titus Mukuku, the Chief Finance Officer at First Capital Bank who will just be sharing with us some of the most important highlights of what is transpiring at this institution. Welcome Mr. Mukuku. Thank you Alois. Uh, maybe to begin with, uh, would you mind sharing with our viewers how the operating environment has been like since the easing of the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions? Okay, thank you. So I think in terms of the um, operating environment business-wise, after the easing of the lockdown um, um, conditions, what we have generally seen is an improvement in the transactional um, um, volumes as customers, um, both um, corporates and individuals, have been allowed to go out there and do um, transactions freely and operate their, um, conduct their business on a day-to-day -day basis um, freely. So that has also spurred growth on our transactional volumes across all our channels in the, uh, in the branch and also the electronic channels. Okay, now still on that, since you highlight that there's been an improvement in terms of uh, you know customers being allowed to move freely and transact, would you mind sharing with us the major highlights uh, within your third quarter financial performance? Okay, thank you. So in terms of for financial performance in um, Q3, uh, we registered a significant increase in our profit, our inflation adjusted profit increased by 100% compared to the last quarter to 376 million. And um, this growth, it was largely uh, being um, um, spurred by the increase in transactional volumes compared to, to Q2. We also had some um, price adjustments uh, due to inflation that we affected, which also helped our revenues to, 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 to increase. The other um, element that also brought in the growth in profits was the increase in our loan book. Um, we have seen growth in the local currency deposits to about uh, 2.6 billion. They grew by about 73%. And um, that growth was then deployed into loans in quarter three. And that has helped our revenues from an interest income um, point of view. The foreign currency deposits um, They've also been increasing. We registered a 3% increase in foreign currency deposits to around 63 million um, United States dollars. And this is largely because um, the public is largely transacting to some extent um, um, in United States dollars. Okay, now, around this era of uh, the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, we saw the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe coming up with measures to allow the use of free funds uh, whereby most of the members of the public are now allowed to transact in US dollar and so forth. We also saw the introduction of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe for an exchange auction system. How has this uh, been impacting on your operations as a first capital bank, especially zeroing in on this issue of the auction system? Okay. Um, I think those uh, measures by the central bank uh, with regards to the use of the free funds, um, to some extent they've um, brought in an element of stability because since you have your foreign currency, I think you are now fully freely to use it to buy goods and services if um, the, the foreign currency is classified as free funds, whereas previously um, um, that element, um, it wasn't in existence. Coming to the auction, uh, when the auction was introduced towards the end of um, Q2, we started to see stability in the market from a price perspective and also the exchange rate. And uh, if you look at the end of um, the statistics um, around the end of November, where we see the inflation um, closing at around 659%, coming from the highs of around 837 percent and uh, at those levels it's actually being forecasted that uh, we'll close at around 350 percent in December um, inflation. So the auction has brought in a great um, um, level of stability in terms of how 
the um, retailers and manufacturers are pricing their goods and services was they are having confidence in the auction system um, and also once they have that confidence in the auction system that is translating into how they are also pricing their goods and services and we have also seen the premium between the um, official exchange rate and the parallel market um, significantly narrowing down and stabilizing i think for the past three four months okay yeah now uh the transition from Barclays to First Capital Bank has been associated with quite a number of opportunities and challenges. Are there still any residual issues which are still dealing with in this transition? Okay. Um, so with regards to the transition from, from Barclays, uh, if I take you back into a bit of history. Um, so when First Capital, um, um, FMB Capital Holdings Group, acquired the, um, the stake from Barclays in, in 2017. We operated under the Barclays brand for a year up to October 2018. And then from October 2018, um, there was a co-branding. We were now under um, First Capital Bank in association with Barclays. So <coughs> we were using that brand for two years. And um, um, <coughs> that period expired in October 2020. Now, October 2020, we then engaged on the final milestone in terms of the migration to the new brand, um, the proudly first capital brand, which we are now using from, uh, from October 2020, going into the future. So from a transition point of view, we are largely done with the systems, we are largely done with the, with the brand. So the branding that happened in October 2020 was the last phase. So there isn't anything else that is still remaining residual from a transitional perspective. I think it's now just for the business, us as a management, to go out there and roll out our, um, our full strategy under the new um, first capital brand. Okay, quite yeah. uh, interesting development. So now with the coming in of this fully fledged brand, are there any new products, any new product offerings for, the, for, the, for your client? Yes, um, um, definitely. We are in the business to, to, to save our customers, uh, give them convenience. And uh, when you look at our purpose, um, it, our purpose is to enable um, customers to achieve their extraordinary. So with that purpose in mind, we are always looking at the products that we are offering our customers and say, how can we improve their convenience? So in the current year, if we can talk about what the products that we have um, recently launched, I think we have partnered with um, RIA um, Money Transfer um, Agent Services. So customers worldwide, they can now do um, 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 money transfer through RIA and to come through First Capital Bank. And with our branch network, which is all over the country, um, the recipients in here, they won't have difficulties in, in terms of saying where do we access the cash from. Both our branches, they are um, spread across the country. Okay. Now, just to hold you there, well, when, when Ria, uh, what advantages uh, can those Zimbabweans in the diaspora enjoy from this product? Uh, and also, how does this become more competitive as compared to other products already existing in the market? Um, so, the Zimbabweans in diaspora, when I look at it, is to say it's the easy and uh, faster access to the transaction being completed end to end and also the recipient will be in Zimbabwe, um, the beneficiary will be in Zimbabwe. They can easily get their cash flows. From a business perspective, we are always resourced with the um, United States dollars or foreign currency, be it runs, be it United States dollars. So we will be able to distribute that cash to the beneficiaries without any, any, any challenges. So I, I, I think that it will be a significant positive to, um, um, to the con uh, customers in diaspora. Okay. Yeah. Then any other products apart from this? Uh? Um, I think we have also had a number of products. We, um, from a retail perspective, we also um, launched our ATMs. Um, we haven't been uh, operating our ATMs for a while, but now they are now back um, um, on the system. So the ATMs, you will be able to dispense um, uh, local currency, which is our um, Zimbabwe dollar bond notes. 
you also have um, United States, you also United States dollars, you also have um, runs that you, you, you will be able to access. So for some of um, um, the clients who actually have like relatives who are here in Zimbabwe, that's an alternative channel. So instead of maybe um, putting funds through um, other, other agencies or I think some they give uh, funds to, to, to some people who will be traveling by road or by air to then say go and give my relatives. Our ATMs are dispensing runs, they are dispensing United States dollars. So if they are able to give their relatives um, cards this side, they can just do the transactions easily through our ATMs and withdraw the money instead of sending it. So that's another option that also the um, um, diaspora customers can also look at. Um, from a corporate perspective, we are coming with, um, we have launched a product called InfiniPay. Um, so this is for our corporate customers to do their bulk payments. When you have maybe you, you want to do one payment run and you want to pay maybe 50 suppliers, that's what uh, InfiniPay is for. You want to pay um, salaries to so many um, employees, that's what InfiniPay is for and it can be accessed online. So it will actually be to their convenience um, to, to use um, InfiniPay. So Mr. Pope, it appears uh, that there are quite a number of products being offered at First Capital Bank. Would you mind sharing uh, with us uh, much more finer details on all these products that you have? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think uh, in addition to the products which I had mentioned um, earlier on, um, also for our retail customers, I think to give them um, comfort around unforeseen events uh, in life, like a funeral. We have also launched the um, um, Katsiriro, which is a, um, a funeral cover in partnership with, uh, with Simnat. It will give them peace of mind and, and convenience in the event that the unforeseen um, happens. Um, we also have, this is um, both on the retail and commercial segment, Nostro loans. Uh, we have started um, issuing Nostro loans um, recently after obtaining the regulatory approvals. And in the current environment where we see some of our customers um, um, earning in foreign currency and some of our corporates, uh, their businesses are driven by foreign currency receipts, we are saying if there is need for cash flow, um, come, let's talk, we, can, we are now doing lending in foreign currency. So even some of the customers who are there in, in, in diaspora, in the event that there is need for um, um, some, some foreign currency loans, I think it's also to um, conduct our retail um, um, business managers where we are now offering foreign currency loans. Um, in addition to that, we also have um, additional products for the SME. Earlier on, I had mentioned uh, around the um, invoice discounting. We also do what we call loyalty lending. So we assess the turnover that's happening in your current account as, a, as an SME. And then we say, for the past six months, we have seen this is the level of your turnover and the balances that you are keeping in your account we can give you so much money without, um, without security because we will be confident of the inflows that we will be seeing coming into your account. So that's also one of the um, products that we have for the, for the SME segments. Um, the last uh, um, product I would want to mention which also focuses on the SME is the business clubs. So it's basically a business club where you have um, thought leadership material being um, 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 shared on, on, on a quarterly basis um, and if there are some who are interested in, um, um, in that product, I think our RMs relationship managers, they are available to assist them in terms of enrolling into the SME business clubs. Okay. Now we understand that of late uh, most uh, members of the banking public have been facing challenges to access cash. Uh, how much are, are your clients getting through the ATMs? Are there no queues outside? And why would you really recommend uh, most of these uh, banking uh, members of the public to come to First Capital? Um, so, so in terms of uh, accessing cash, um, 
we, we can look at it from, from two perspectives. I think the, the local current cash, it also depends with the with availability. So if we have the if we have the cash and the notes are clean, um, we we'll put them in our ATMs or they can be accessed through through the branch. I think there are certain instances where um, sometimes we then um, won't be having the, the, the local currency cash, but usually it's not like for prolonged periods. The foreign currency cash, which is usually the United States dollars or runs, um, since we opened up the ATMs, um, those funds, they are, usually, they are always available. Uh, we don't run out of, of United States. We haven't run out of United States dollars or runs in our, in our ATMs. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, going forward, what, what are your prospects? What do you, do, do you perceive to, to be working on you know, to actually concretize this whole effort, the whole effort which you are, you are putting into, into the bank? Um, so I think uh, looking ahead um, and also looking back where we, we came from um, as a bank and as a brand, um, the stage where we are now is for, for us to, um, um, to go out there and fully execute our strategy. Um, so going into 2021 and into the future, we are largely focusing on um, aggressively um, um, executing our strategy which is largely um, corporate and SME-led, um, um, digitally-led bank. So it's combining our segments there. We, we have our corporate segments, we have retail, we have uh, also SME. We will be coming out there with the various products uh, that we'll be offering to all those segments. And also at the same time, we'll also be focusing uh, our attention more on the digital space because that's where largely banking and the world is going. Okay, now you have uh, just touched on a very interesting issue on SMEs coming from a background where we are existing in, a, in, a, in an economy with a highly informalized uh, as a society involved in the SME sector. What products do you have for, for the SME, currently SMEs? Okay, so currently for, for the SMEs, um, some of the products that we have, they largely um, talk to um, providing them with financing. So if they are a supplier of one of the um, key corp or one of the corporate clients, they can come to us and say, well, um, I've supplied these goods to um, um, such and such a corporate, but they are going to pay me in 30 days, in 60 days time. In the meantime, I need um, um, working capital. So from our perspective, we can take the invoice um, look at the corporate that they have supplied. If we are happy with it, we, then, we can then give them bridging finance um, so that their business can then continue and they don't have to wait for the 60 days when this corporate is going to settle for them. So this is just one of the products that we, uh, we have. But going into the future, it's one of the segments that we are going to be focusing on um, specifically much more than what we have been doing previously. And um, within the group, it's also one of our regional strength, um, the SME segment. So we'll also be tapping into um, um, the group strength and resources around uh, when we're now, now rolling out our strategy on the SME to come and uh, push it locally um, a bit more um, aggressively than what we have been doing previously. And I think that's, w that, that's just one example of a product. I think they also have the convenience from a banking point of view, from a segmentation, we do have specific accounts that are earmarked for the SME segments. And from a pricing point of view, they, are, they have discounts or they are lower priced compared to your large corporates, because we also understand the space that they will be operating in. Okay, now as we round off uh, our program, what will be your, your final words to our viewers and your clients out there? Um, so to, to our customers and uh, viewers, um, what we are saying is um, First Capital Bank is to say, um, come and uh, work, uh, work with us um, this new journey that we are embarking on. We are building a new heritage in Zimbabwe um, using the First Capital branch. Previously, we have been here, but it was largely under the Barclays brand. 
we are now building a new heritage under the first capital proudly first capital um, brand so come and uh, work with us we are seeing the future with uh, with full confidence given the resources that we have um, uh, in terms of deposits in terms of loans in terms of also the talented and committed colleagues that we have within the bank will be promising our customers and those new customers to come that will be providing an excellent service going into the future given also that we have moved away now from the space where our IT systems were not stable now the IT systems have, have, um, have stabilized um, so it's now just rolling out our strategy so we promise um, excellent service to, 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 um, to our customers uh, going into, into the future We'll also be, there are new products that we are working on that will be coming into, um, into 2021, largely focusing on giving our customers convenience uh, to transact wherever they want to transact from. So there are a number of initiatives which we are working with internally and also combined uh, with the, the um, group strength that we have. There will be new in initiatives that will be rolling out into um, um, 2021. I think above all is to thank the customers uh, for the support that they've been giving us. We wouldn't be here without um, them coming to do their transactions and their banking with us. So we really appreciate that uh, support and service and um, we, we say let's continue working the, the journey together um, and we'll be benefiting both ways. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Titus Mkuk, for your time. Okay, thank you. Well, viewers, our program has come uh, to an end. Uh, for this and other program, do not hesitate to visit our website, which is www.newzimbabwe.com, our Twitter handle, newzimbabwe.com, our Facebook page, newzimbabwe.com, our online TV channel, which is newzim TV. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your viewing.